like to send a big shout out to all of our mothers on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. And uh, big shout out to all of our brothers and sisters in social media land. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is a day that the Most High Heavenly Father made. We should be rejoicing and being glad in it, whatever it is. Because ain't no guarantee that we're going to get another one. But for this particular one, we're going to come with a, a little short Mother's Day message. And um, to all of my mothers out there, this is going to be for you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to read, I'm going to read this passage of scripture, and then I'm going to come back, and then uh, I'm going to just do a little uh, uh, recap over it. Uh, just give me a few minutes. I'm going to take up too much of your time. I know y'all probably getting ready for dinner or getting ready for some event mm -hmm. or something going on. So, so, uh, so we're going to take off with the video, and let's read. This is to my mothers, but brothers, you need to pay close attention because many times, boy, we can be operating in our marriage and be completely way far off from what the Father means for us to understand. And to my sisters, you know, we wish you a happy Mother's Day. You understand there's a certain place uh, that every mother need to be in. And uh, so we got mothers that are on all different type of levels of life. But nevertheless, if you're a mother and uh, and you've been responsible for raising a generation of children, you've been responsible for producing children in this world, then we're going to say Happy Mother's Day. But there is also a... Um, there's also a great level of accountability. So we're gonna go and we're gonna go and look at this. We're gonna put the phone on do not disturb so we don't ring and then um and we'll do that. So let me hold on one second while I do that. I uh, thank y'all for being so patient and waiting on me while we try to get um uh, the phone situated. For our mothers out here. For our mothers out here. Oh, uh, well, you know, we don't worry about them. You don't worry about them because, you know, those are self-righteous folks. You know, even the Bible tells you to be not righteous over much. And why destroy yourself before your time? See, many of those type of brothers and sisters, they're going to be destroyed before their time. Matter of fact, they've already been destroyed before their time because of the particular mindset that they have. And I tell anybody, you know, uh, I have one of my one of my children just text me a minute ago uh, earlier uh, and asked, he said, well, well, uh, well, dad, uh, I need to ask you, is Mother's Day a, a, a holiday? Because I know y'all don't celebrate holidays and things like that. And I say Mother's Day is not a holiday. Mother's Day is a day of appreciation. And any man or any woman that comes out of the womb should have appreciation for those that give life to the next generation of children. Now, if anybody feel like something wrong with that, you know what I mean? There's not something wrong with the people that's showing appreciation. It's something wrong with the people that have that type of mindset. So we ain't going there. This is Mother's Day. And if them brothers got mothers and they got grandmothers and they think that they too good and living too righteous of a life to wish them a happy Mother's Day and be thankful for everything that they've got doing, what they don't understand, they've already destroyed themselves because they done failed to honor what God told them to honor thy mother and thy father. Father, is to show appreciation, to show a spirit of gratitude, is to express that with words and with deeds. So anybody with that type of mindset, and they, they already know, they can miss me because I'm going to shoot bullet holes in all of that. Okay, so let's take off running to my mothers. I wish somebody would tag some people or share the video with somebody on this Mother's Day. Let's read the story. Let's see what the Messiah have to say about it. Most of the time, Yoshi Yahoo, many of the brothers and sisters be talking based on what they think and not what they know. But there's always an opportunity for, for them to learn something. So let's go. Let's see how Yahshua or Jesus felt about it. And Yahshua, this is chapter 11 of the book of Yahshua. Coming out of the song of God, and Yeshua or Jesus went through the cities, throughout the cities of the capitalist teaching and showing forth the coming of the kingdom. And when the feast of Passover had drew near, he came again into Bethsaida, and there was with him many disciples, both of men and women. Both of men and women. 
You see, men ain't the only people that, that are disciples. And what a disciple is, is a disciple is anybody who had disciplined themselves enough to start walking in instruction of the Messiah. So happy Mother's Day. You mothers, you're going to have to understand is that you're going to need to start disciplining yourself and walking in instruction of the Messiah. And certain women which had been healed, verse 2, of the afflictions and affirmities, infirmities ministered. They served unto the Lord with all gentle affection. And one of those women were Mary of Magdala, jo Joanna, the wife of Chuzza, Herod's chief steward, Susanna of Jatapata, Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, Regilla of Hippos, and many others also, and they gave unto the ministry of their substance, and they gave unto the Yahshua's ministry of their substance. That means that they was responsible for feeding Yahshua or Jesus and his 12 apostles. That means that they were responsible for housing, for sheltering them, for clothing them. They were responsible for their substance. They gave their substance to the ministry. So many times what you have is you have sisters that are being responsible for men who don't even recognize it. But there arose among the disciples, among the men, a great contention for some thought it unseemly that women should serve the Lord or to touch him or that they should sit at his feet to learn. For it was taught in all of Israel that it was an evil thing that any woman should learn either the law or the prophets since by women came the fall of man. You see that foolishness and that same mindset is on brothers right now that refuse to honor the women on a day such as today, Mother's Day. They didn't think that it was right that the women should be able to, to serve the Messiah or touch the Messiah or sit at his feet to learn. And right now in this day, you have a, a whole bunch of self-righteous, hypocritical men out here that feel like, oh, I suffer not a woman to teach. Well, I ask you, who told you that? Whose voice is that speaking? Because that is not the voice of the Messiah. We know that Paul said, I suffer a woman not to teach or usurp authority over a man for the woman fell into sin and not the man. That's what Paul said. But that's not what Yahshua is saying about women. He don't have the authority to determine whether or not a woman does anything or not. And the reason why Paul said those things is for this reason. For it was taught, it was thought in all of Israel that it was an evil thing that women should learn either the law or the prophets since woman by woman came the fall of man. So it was taught in order for it to become a thought in somebody's head, sister, that you shouldn't teach or you shouldn't do this. It had to first be taught. And so the men of Israel taught these things to their sons as though they were law and though they were commandment to permit women from entering into certain places. But that's not what the Messiah is saying. And if it be so that any woman should take to herself the knowledge of these things, then what many would think her to be a witch filled with mischief and they would stone her and drive her uh, out of the city to Paris. You see how crazy that is? You see the disrespect, the disrespect of, of our women that if she learned or if she got good in certain areas, you, you would apply some type of nonsense to her, like she, uh, uh, like like rebellion or something like that. And they'd be ready to stone her or cast her out into the, uh, to the outer parts of the city to, to die. Now, this is what men were doing back then where women were concerned. It was all right for women to clothe me, to feed me, to take care of me, to give me some sex, to do all these things, and then at the same time not have no rights to anything that the Messiah means for, uh, for her as it relates to her purpose. And we don't want that for our sisters. Verse 7, now when Yahshua, Jesus, heard the matter of their dispute, he withdrew from, himself a little, withdrew from them a little way. And when the disciples saw that the master sat alone away from them, they came unto him saying, good master, why have you withdrawn yourself away from us? For we are alone being without you. Come therefore and walk with us for we care for you and would be your disciples. But the Lord wouldn't. He said, get away from me. Don't come up here whimpering up to me like uh, y'all some little sissified jokers. You know what you're doing. It's wrong. And you think that I'm going to be a part of it. 
And that's where we need brothers at. We need brothers to understand that when it comes to other brothers that being held accountability, you don't come to me with that nonsense. You don't come with the, come to me with that nonsense about what you're going to cheating on your wife and, and what you're going to do to this woman and what you're going to do to that woman. You don't come to me with that nonsense. That don't move me. That make me withdraw myself from you because you're not displaying a righteous character toward the greatest gift that God ever gave to a man. You see, we start talking about righteousness and mothers, you have to understand the God given authority and the God given power that he has given you. Because if you start thinking like men, then what you're going to find yourself is you're going to find yourself in a war with men and then failing to understand what your purpose is, therefore leaving the world in a far worse condition. Because if the help leaves the company, the company can't survive. And if God say, I will create the woman, I will create her and make her a uh, help me to that man to help that man build the world. When you understand, when you fail to realize that the help is the greatest thing that God ever done to the world and you can't fall into that position, you leave the world in a far worse condition. Because you can see here that the men, the brothers are already messed up. And we have to get our sisters back in the place that they're supposed to be. So that they can help us be the men that we are supposed to be. He says, it says, now when the Messiah heard the manner of their argument or their dispute, he withdrew himself away from them. And then they came, man, what, what you doing over here, man? Come on, man. We, we boys, you know, we, we following, you know, why you over there? But he said, the, the Messiah, he said, I, I ain't bothering y'all right now. Y'all leave me alone. He said, but the Lord would not, and he sent them away. Man, y'all get on out of here. Get on out of here, because y'all over there talking that foolishness, talking that nonsense. I'm out here trying to uh, 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 revive the world, and y'all being stagnators of the, the number one source that it's going to take for me to revive it. Get away from me. Then they came a second time saying, Master, come walk with us, and again, he would not. Man, I told y'all to leave me alone. I'm not fooling with you clowns right now. Since y'all feel that way about the women, I'll hang over here with the women. These women is responsible for you eating yesterday. These women have been washing your feet and everything, and y'all going to sit over there and start arguing about women because they close and because they receiving from me good things? Are you jealous of something? And many times, mothers, you got to understand, you got some men out here that will be jealous of the things that God has naturally done for you. But when you understand these things, then you understand where you need to put your power at in order to redirect the thinking of that particular man. So, and so it says, they came a second time saying, Master, come walk with us. And again, he would not, but he sent them away instead. Now, when it was evening, the disciples repented among themselves over their contention and came to the Lord a third time. And they said, come my Lord and be with us for we have repented from our anger. See, they knew that they was wrong. They knew that they was wrong. And sometimes you just give a brother an opportunity to be by himself and he'll come to his senses and understand, hey, I was wrong. And now they go and repent. So now they can reconnect themselves to the Messiah. And this is what you mothers and you sisters need to understand that's coming up. They say, have mercy, O, o Lord, for even we would turn aside from our own way to follow you. Now they got, to, they got to renounce their own way. And their own way was what they had been taught, and the men of Israel, that it was, not, uh, it was not proper for a woman to serve God, for a woman to study the law, for a woman to study the prophets, for a woman to walk by that instruction. It was, they said it was wrong, and they were taught these things. So now they declare, we will turn away. From our own way. We will sacrifice our own thinking. We will sacrifice what we've been taught. Because we want to follow you. Sometimes brothers. That's what brothers have to do. You need to turn away from what you think. About a thing. If you want to follow the most high. Because we're not dealing with no science fiction. No superficiality. No religion. We are dealing with real life. As it relates to us being able to make a the instructions that we get out of the book. 
And Yahshua seeing that all of his disciples, seeing that all his disciples were gathered together, he taught them, saying, of all things which govern the affairs of men, which is the strongest. Now what we see is the disciples done repented and got reconnected. But when we started, his disciples was both women and men. So now he have gathered the women and the men together. And now he's about to deal with them about some things. The women and the men get together and they can both get up under the instruction of the word. Both of them come to understand their personal accountability to God as as individuals first, then as a collective body of men and women. So now they all gathered together. And this is the foundation of his lesson as it relates to the thought process of men who think they know God's way, but really don't. Here's what it says. And Yeshua seeing that all of his disciples were gathered near, he taught them saying, of all of the things which govern in the affairs of men, which is the strongest? And one man answered and said, men are truly the strongest, having power over all things, for they do compel even that the whole earth and the sea should give up its bounty for their sake. But another man said, no, kings are the strongest of all, for they rule over the affairs of men, making subject unto their will the ways of men and of nations. And all men are forced to obey the commands of the king, even in the midst of war. For the wrath of the king is more greatly to be feared than the dangers of the enemy, which come from abroad. And another man said, if men be strong and kings be strong, then wine is the strongest of all. For it brings low the mightiest king and exalts to the heavens the lowest of men. For strong wine does make the wise to appear as fools and the cowardly to appear as brave and friends to appear as enemies. Thus is wine more powerful than men or kings directing always the affairs of men. For when a man is drunk, he knows not what he does. And when a man is sober, neither does he remember. Thus spoke the disciples concerning the thing which is strongest in the affairs of men, but the Lord. See, men can say what they want, and it don't make no difference what men say. It's going to make a difference what the Lord has to say. So it says, where we go? Let me find it. Let me find it. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So thus spoke. The disciples concerning that which was strongest in the affairs of men. But the Lord spoke unto them, saying, Hear now this parable and be wise. For there was a certain king who would take captive a distant city and bringing forth his army, he laid siege against it. But for all his might, he could not breach the walls thereof. For they, they were strong and mighty, and against its strength did many perish. And after a season, the king grew tired and he went away to his own kingdom and all of the people rejoiced in the strength of the wall and they boasted before God how that no man could take by force the inhabitants of the city. Now, when it was night, there sprung up beside the wall. A small and slender vine made beautiful and rare, and in the shadow of the city it began to grow, sending its tendrils into the crevices of the wall. And in the morning when the inhabitants saw it, they marveled, saying, It is a gift from God, for see how it makes beautiful the whole city. And when it had grown for many years, there came a strong wind in the night, and behold, the wall fell in upon itself, putting a peril the putting in peril the whole city, which, which was therefore the strongest in the affairs of men, the king or the slender vine. And one answered, the vine, my Lord. And Yeshua hearing this saying, is there, is, it, is there not written in this saying, the race is not always given to the swift, neither the victory of battle to the strong? Why then will you think women unworthy to receive from God a full measure of blessing, seeing that for your sake, for the sake of your traditions, only would you keep them ignorant of the law of the prophets? For I tell you truly of all things which move round about in the affairs of men, women are the stronger, being great 
greater than kings or greater than wine. For in the womb of a woman are all men made to come alive. Come now and answer wisely. What king shall rule that he first shall be, except he first be fashioned in the womb? For no man comes forth of himself. For it is in the womb that men are fashioned, whether king or slave, whether priest or prophet, whether lord or beggar, all are come from the woman. And without the woman is no man coming into the earth. I tell you truly that for the sake of a woman will a man surrender both wealth and power or forget altogether his parents and his friends. For even the mighty being kings, if they would be greater still, make themselves subjected unto their wives and will give unto them anything which they should ask. Have you not read how Xerxes, while he was yet Lord over the earth, being king in Persia, granted unto Esther the life of all Israel? And Israelites are always talking that nonsense, but what they don't understand is that the whole nation of Israel could have been completely wiped out and slaughtered if God didn't raise up this woman that called Esther that was able to go in there and woo the king into relenting from something that had been signed with the signet of his ring. And the, uh, the signing of a king's signet ring is an irrevocable event. That means that once the, 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 the paper received the sap, so let it be written, so let it be done. All of Israel was supposed to be wiped out and hung on gallows that Hammond had created. But because of this woman, all of Israel was saved. And he's reminding the brothers that read the scripture of these things that's contained in the scripture when it comes to our women, because we don't have no help until we can get our sisters in the right place. And that's what the Messiah is doing. See, when the Messiah come along and sister, you start getting that instruction, you realize how bad you are, how much power and how much authority that God had naturally given you. But you'll also realize that your power and your authority was not given to you so that you can create a world for yourself. That power and authority was given to you so that you can now come back and give it to me so that I can be the best man. That I'm supposed to be. So. So he said. Have you not read how that Xerxes. While he was lord over all the earth. Being king in Persia. Granted unto Esther the life of us, all of Israel. For this cause do you celebrate the feast of Purim. In joy and in thanksgiving. For in the woman. Esther did God deliver Israel from Haman who desired the death of all Israelites. Why then will you withhold from women the things that come from God? Have you not read that how in the days of Josiah, when Josiah was king over Judah, there was found in the temple the book of the law, which no man knew, not even the high priest, nor Jeremiah the prophet. No, they didn't know it because Josiah was the king at eight years old. Jeremiah was, was the prophet, but they was teenagers. They didn't have that level of understanding. And the priests had been so far removed from God's will. That's why they were peace priests. They did not know. So they took the book to a woman whose name was Holder, a prophetess of great renown, and desired that she should tell them from whence it came, whether or not it was truly that book which was from Moses, and she delivered unto the king the word of the Lord concerning the book of uh, uh, concerning the book and unto all of Jerusalem also. Who was that? They came along and said, I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not a woman to usurp authority over men. When God give a woman to something great, everything that's up under him has to fall up under. That's why in Peter it tells us, submit yourselves one to another. There's a time that women are to be submissive to their men, but there's also a time that men should be submissive to a woman who have God have given a great gift in the same manner that the king Josiah submitted himself up under the will of Huldah. The prophets, Jeremiah, they submitted themselves and the priests, they all sat down at the feet of a woman to be taught. Now any joker coming along talking about I suffer a woman not to do this, that's not God saying that. That's not God saying that. 
I don't care what preacher in your Bible, the women ain't allowed in the pulpit. Well, it's a good thing because the pulpit is full of corruption. And anytime any sister goes up into that place, she should understand that you don't follow that man in no place of corruption. You ain't got no business in no pulpit. But it ain't because you don't have the authority to give or display what God had given you. Most of the time they like that because they've been taught and they've been listening to the wrong person. They've been serving Yahshua or serving Paul in the name of Jesus and they got everything backwards. But we'll pull this word out and you see for yourself. Why will you then withhold from women things which are come from God? So they talking about holding, explaining to the prophets and Jer uh, Jeremiah and the king Josiah. So they took the book to a woman whose name was Halda, a prophetess of great renown, and desired that she would tell them from where it came, whether or not it was really truly that book that came from Moses. And she delivered unto the king the word of the Lord concerning the book and unto all Jerusalem also. Consider again this other also. For their judge in Israel, Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, and she called unto Barak, and th that he might save Israel from the hand of Sisera. Yet Barak would not go forth except that Deborah should stand beside him in the day of battle. And Deborah, by her faithfulness unto God and Israel, delivered the nation from evil. Which of you, therefore, being men, have done like these women? Which of you, therefore, being men, have done like these women? who being elected of God, delivered unto all of Israel the word of the Lord. Consider then the strength wherein the woman is fashioned. For she being frail and comely, yet by her beauty and grace does she humble the mighty or exalt on high the lowest of men, if it be so that they should love her. For women are as the wind which come from above, causing all things to move, there, uh, causing all things things to move before them. And men, though stout and mighty as a yonder tree, yet are they moved when there should breathe upon them some small wind. A good example of that is when, when a man can be out cheating on his woman for 20 years and she can stand there and she can take it and all. And then soon as he find out that his wife got eyes for another man, he's ready to go kill himself. He's ready to go kill somebody. He's ready to go forget about life, crawl inside of a whiskey bottle, get on drugs and never come out. That's the condition. That's a good example of what that means. How men are shaken by the smallest of things. This is, the, this is what the Messiah is saying. He said, and men, though stout and mighty as a yonder tree, yet are they moved when there should breathe upon them some small wind. Thus in the affairs of men are women made stronger. For if a woman be good and a and an and, and evil man love her, then by her love does she make the man good also. For he desires to please her above everything else. You see, sister, you got to understand what kind of power you got. It said, if you love, if, if you, if, 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 let me read it again. If a woman, it says, it says, if a woman be good and an evil man love her, then by her love does she make an evil man good. You see, our sisters have the power to stop the killing. Our sisters have the power to stop all of these things. Because if you're a good woman and you're connected to a man that's doing some evil stuff, you could stop him from doing it. You could stop him from doing it. You don't just, you don't just, Put up with anything that a man does. If a woman is good, she can take a man that is rot, good, grimy, and evil and turn him into a good man simply because he desires to be with her above everything else. Oh, man, I just love this girl. I know this. Man, I've been a gangster all my life. She's turning me into jello pudding, but I love her. When a man loves a woman like that, he will give up all of that nonsense. 
She had the power to reverse. You have the power to reverse the circumstances of the world. It's, but you got to know who you are. And you got to know who you are because God created you for a man. And when a man sees a woman, it's like, good God Almighty, that's bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Hey, hey, ain't nothing else to live for. Uh, only reason why I'm getting the money is so that I can get hurt. Only reason why I'm buying the cars is so I can ride her around in. Only reason why I got the house is so I can get this woman to be impressed. For he cares to please her. And when a man have a desire to please a woman, that good woman can change that man's ways. This is what, this is what, this is where Yahshua is making a brother understand the natural God-given power that God has given to our sisters. And at some point, we're going to have to understand that it's there so we'll know how to use it and how to take advantage of the power that had been naturally given to them. The disciples didn't know. But they are learning, just like many of us brothers didn't know. But we are learning. And because of the way that we have treated our women, our women have morphed into something because of the things that we have done. There would be a hoe if there was not a man with a corrupt mind to pimp. There would not be a sister on a stripping pole if it wasn't a man out there with dollars to put in their G-string. There wouldn't be no sisters out there on drugs and on heroin if it wasn't a man to put the needle in their arm or put those things out there on them. All of the conditions that women are in that are not so lovely, they, they are not responsible for. There would be no single parent mothers if the men would stay with the women. Every condition that our sisters is experiencing is because they have been following us in areas where their power should be standing up. And mama, you need to be saying, I'm fearfully, I'm marvelously made. Created in God's image. I'm a bad woman. I'm great. I'm marvelous. I'm the mother of everything that has life. Without me, nothing moves. Without my knowledge of who I am, nothing moves. And I understand it. If I don't find a way to get this knowledge back into the man that God created me for, then we are all doomed. We are all doomed. Happy Mother's Day, sisters. He said... The man desires to please her. So when you desire to please a woman, and she's saying, baby, you know you're out there. You're hurting your own people. You, you're selling your own people this stuff. And, and I really don't need the money. I don't need the money, baby. I'm just satisfied with who you are. And I love you for who you are. But I don't want to see you doing that, baby, because that's going to be against God. You see, that man will start thinking about that because he desires to please her. If she know that he got guns and, and know that he got a bad attitude, then she she know, baby, I, you know what? You don't need to do that, sweetie. You don't need to do that, you know? I don't want to see you too valuable to be in jail. You're too valuable. The kids need you. Your sisters and brothers need you. Your loved ones need you. You can't allow yourself to be keep getting put in those situations where harm can come to you. I know you got your pride, but we your family over here. See, sister, when you start talking to a man like that, you don't have the ability to change his mind. God give you the words to be able to talk to a man. If a woman be a good woman, she has the power to change an evil man because the evil man, even though he's out there evil, he desires to please this woman because when he get through with all that mess, he comes home to her and there's safety. You see? But it goes on and says this, but if a woman be evil and a good man loves her, who can save him? If a good man get hooked up with the wrong woman, it ain't nobody on the planet that can save him. So sisters, on this Mother's Day, we want you to understand how powerful you are and God and, uh, and God give you a great purpose in this world. You have to stand up. You have to be able to tell us brothers, nah, baby, I know, I know I've been fornicating and I know I've been letting men use me, but you know the buck stopped right here. Just because it happened don't mean I can't repent. I don't repent from it. Ain't another man never going to use me for a trash receptacle, for a sperm bank. I'm going to pray to God, let me get control over my hormones so I don't be found leading 
leading no man down that road that's not going to be what it's supposed to be. I'm too great and my responsibility in this world is too great. I got my children looking at me. I got my grandchildren looking at me. I got my nieces looking at what a woman's supposed to be like. And I know I ain't been that type of woman because I ain't had that type of instruction out in front of me and ain't nobody taught me those things. But now I hear my brother coming, telling me in the word what Yahshua, what Jesus feel about me, what God feel about me. And now I'm ready to make a change and see the whole sky open up. And I'm going to wait on the man because I know when I learn how to love the greatest man that ever lived, when I learn how to make the most high my first love, then comes the other. Then comes the other. So let's get out there and get it. Happy Mother's Day. This is indeed a great day to be alive. This is the day that the Most High Heavenly Father had made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. And that comes from a young man who looked at the cold, dead, lifeless body of his mother at the age of 10 years old. And though I didn't have my physical mother at the age of 10, God sent other women that were not my mothers, that had their own children, that picked me up and assumed the responsibility and made me as their own child, which would feed me, which would clothe me, which would send me to beauty school, which would do all sorts of things. And even until this day right now, they are still the mothers in my life. And just because you have not produced physical children, God got a plan and God got a will for everybody. Just because you ain't never produced physical children, that don't mean that something is wrong with you. Because the Most High said those that don't have no children that, that have character and honor for me, the love that I have for them when they get in glory, that I have the love for them that is greater than seven sons and seven daughters. And shouts out to all of our mothers, the mothers of the world who have assumed the motherly responsibility of other children that got brought into this world that were neglected. Children that came into this world whose mothers died. Children that came into this world whose mothers got on drugs and got dysfunctional. Children that came into this world whose mothers put them up for adoption. There were mothers that became mothers to them. Happy Mother's Day to all of my sisters.